Alexander the Great Julius Caesar Genghis Khan Napoleon Bonaparte, the last of the four great conquerors, imagine a guy weeping because conquering two million square kilometers was not enough for him, the glory hunter. Alexander the Great only cared about one thing. Conquering the world, he threw his army into battle without fear of defeat as if he were immortal, and why wouldn't he think that the man was on a victory spree for ten years? His men were tired and wanted to return home so they could enjoy the luxuries they had won. But their king cared for no riches, he didn't even care much for ruling, only conquering, and everything was going well for him until he hit a wall in India. Alexander lost many troops when battling Porus, his most difficult engagement. He was reputedly wounded himself, and his horse died in battle. He kept pressing his men, but over the river was another enormous Indian army refreshed and ready, while his men were fatigued and weak. They asked Alexander to call it a day. Alexander's drinking habit led to a 50-year war between his generals over who would inherit his vast empire after his death. Despite the fact that the Macedonian Empire was never about Macedonia in the first place, he was known for his drinking. Greek historians write that Alexander's body didn't decompose for six days after his death, proving that the warrior king was definitely a deity, however, they neglected to recognize he wasn't dead to begin with. Nowadays, specialists believe Alexander suffered from a neurological disease that left him in a coma. It is extremely conceivable that Alexander heard his men's plots before being buried alive. Next, we had Alexander's fanboy, Gaius Julius Caesar, while Alexander cried because there were no more worlds to conquer. Caesar is reported to have burst into tears while reading the exploits of Alexander, he said to his men when he was of my age, he had conquered Darius, but up to now nothing has been accomplished by me as his ideal was Alexander. He turned out to be self-obsessed and narcissistic once he had gained significant power as a general and statesman, he undermined the Roman Republican system and declared himself dictator perpetual dictator in perpetuity. Rome feared that Caesar intended to establish a monarchy which would completely undermine their authority. On March 15, 44 BC, a group of 60 senators assassinated Caesar at a Senate meeting. They did so by stabbing him 23 times in unison to demonstrate their love for him. The last thing Caesar saw was his own adopted son and trusted ally, Marcus Brutus, present among the assailants. This brings us to the medieval era, which was primarily known for the Crusaders, but was eclipsed by Genghis Khan, the Beast of the East. The greatest happiness is to scatter your enemy, drive him before you, see his cities reduced to ashes, see those who love him covered in tears, and gather his wives and daughters into your bosom. This is in contrast to Alexander or Caesar, who did not view themselves as God or a Messiah. Instead, he knew they were tyrants and boasted openly about it. Multiple narratives exist regarding his demise. Rashid Olden claims to have died from the bubonic plague, while renowned Italian explorer Marco Polo claims to have been shot while riding a horse and to have died from his wounds a few days later. According to another account, he was severely castrated by a princess of the Western Shia Empire. Because his death was intended to be kept a secret prior to passing away, it is not as thoroughly chronicled as that of previous conquerors. He had kept as a concubine by force. Because the Mongols were in the midst of their 20-year-long desired invasion of the Western Shia Empire, which was more essential to the dying Genghis Khan than his own lavish funeral, he gave his family and followers instructions to keep his death a secret. Even though his corpse brought death, Khan's followers massacred everyone along the route of his funeral procession in order to keep it a secret. Fast forward five centuries, and Napoleon Bonaparte may have been the greatest conqueror to have lived. He made the transition from swords and spears to artillery, and while he became emperor in the name of defending revolutionary France, it is clear that his ambitions carried him far beyond that, and his peculiar personality made him even more unlike the other great conquerors. Alexander believed himself to be a deity, and Caesar believed himself to be the only messiah for his people. Genghis was a despotic overlord, but Napoleon saw himself as a master of war. He is claimed to have stated, I love power, but I love it as an artist. He was an artist, and the battlefield was a picture, and he had a remarkable capacity for concentration and fact recall. 
during a campaign in 1805, when one of his subordinates was unable to find his division and his aides were combing through documents and maps, the emperor told the officer where his unit was currently and where he would be spending the next three nights. His forces moved as quickly as the wind, but the stakes got higher and higher, the death toll increased, and the battles became even more bloody until he was defeated at the Battle of Waterloo in 1815 and was captured by the British forces. He was not sentenced to death because the British did not want him to die as a martyr instead they house arrested him. The status and resume of the unit's strength as well as the subordinates military record this out of an army with seven corps a total of 200,000 men with all the units on the moon it was all pictured in his head. Living in a decaying bungalow with a handful of his supporters he spent the remainder of his life denying the reality of his situation. Whenever he hosted a dinner party, men were supposed to wear military attire and women showed up in evening gowns and jewels. He wanted to feel as though he was still in charge. Years of seclusion and loneliness eventually took their toll on him, and on May 5, 1821, he made his final admission, naming Josephine the head of the French army. The great four conquerors came to an end when one of them passed away from an unexpected illness and the other was slain in battle by his own soldiers. He essentially articulated all that was important to him, including his country, his military career, and his marriage to Josephine.